similarly we have parents today who have no idea about what is happening in the lives of their children in the lives of the children but we are excellent in many other things except in our parenting today that is the greatest neglect and we are paying price for it right now today we are paying price for it our children are living in vacuums they are living in loneliness they are living in dep depression they are living in isolation they feel unwanted they feel unloved because people everywhere judge them according to their academics or according to their talents they don't see children as how they are what they are as a gift of god this is a biggest failure today my dear friends parental neglect parental neglect and mother teresa calls us to create this love family so that all these things would come down when there is a happy family the survey also says you are going to give identity promote self esteem and it prevents anti social behaviors they are not going to get into drugs they are not going to get into bad companies they are not going to become gundas or rafaians it prevents them from getting into anti social elements and there are low levels of depression when there is peace love and kindness in the family so that is the beautiful thing that you can give your children create an environment of love peace and kindness why did mother teresa go around serve everybody what did she see in the poor why did why has she to go and do things which others were refusing to do you know in one of the interviews the journalist says even if you give me a one crore i will not clean this man who is fallen in the gutter but you know what she says i see god in them i see god in them i see the image and likeness of god in them and she you no know, goes on to say they are like sacraments you know in every sacrament jesus is present similarly they are sacraments in whom jesus is present if you ask me they become the eighth sacrament so don't necessarily find jesus in the church don't necessarily find jesus in the bible try finding jesus outside the church they live in the poor and that is where our christian duty comes to completion our identity of christianity so share that love with the other families mother teresa narrates a incident she got to hear that one hindu family was uh, living in starvation so she packs all the ration goes and gives to this family with eight children and then the mother See you.
have is offered to him as we come to sing his praise. Blessed is the Lord of heaven, mighty God of all our days. On we go to Jerusalem, the city of the house of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, The way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O Israel, Is my way not just? Hear now, Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die for it. For the iniquity which he has committed, he shall die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he shall save his life because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he had committed. He will surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord. O oh Lord, make me know your ways, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I have hoped in you all day long. Remember your compassion, O oh Lord. Remember your compassion, O oh Lord, and your merciful love for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the ways to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble, he teaches his way. Remember your compassion, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ be stand, every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory. Giving praise unto a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe in him. But the tax collectors and the harlots believed in him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, after Mother Teresa received the Nobel Peace Prize Award, she was questioned. What would promote peace in the world? In the world we find war, suffering, famine, natural calamities and uh, humanly promoted destructions. So what can promote peace in the world? What can promote peace in the world? And all that Mother Teresa said was, go home and love your family. Go home and love your family. She was very clear. If nations, if society has to experience peace, joy around, it all starts at home. Home is the beginning of everything. Home is the beginning of love. Peace or war begins from home. So she made it very clear. Go home, love your family. Love your children, love your husband, love your wife. 
and that's how you promote peace in this world as this year in the archdiocese is dedicated to families i would relate mother teresa that's this feast of mother teresa with the family my dear friends all of us know mother teresa but we seldom know about her as agnes agnes that's her home name that is how she was lovingly called by her parents nicolo and drontai my dear friends actually nicolo was a construction contractor and he was deeply involved in spiritual activities in the church so he was a member of the church who actively engaged in spiritual activities and he was also a member of a party of he played a vital role in politics but when agnes mother teresa agnes was 8 years old he passed away and that is when agnes developed a very close bonding with her mother with her mother her mother was a very pious and devout woman who prayed every day who was regular to church activities like her husband she was a very pious woman who also brought their children in piety but something more to admire is her deep commitment to charity she was the one who gave this aspect of charity to mother teresa so she this is the advice she gives her daughter that is agnes mother teresa she says my child do not eat a single mouthful unless you are sharing it with others my child do not eat a single mouthful not even one uh, mouth unless you are sharing it with others it is said that there were people who were in distress they were abandoned she used to invite home mother of agnes would invite home and share the food with them she would share whatever she had after her husband's death there was poverty at home but still she would share the food she would share that food with those who were hungry so one time i think agnes asked her mother who are these people that you are feeding she says they are our relations they are our people you see the attitude attitude is the way you look at things the way she looked at people now you understand where mother teresa got all this beautiful qualities of doing charity it all started at home it all started with the formation charitable formation that her mother gave when she was a kid when she was growing at home so these are the lessons that she has learned from her mother so if you have to appreciate mother teresa today we have to great, give a greater appreciation to the mother of mother teresa mother of agnes you know when jesus performed beautiful miracles when he was going around preaching the love message of god somebody from the crowd would say blessed is the womb that you were born blessed is the breast that you suckled that means they are appreciating appreciating mother for the for the gift of this son called jesus my dear friends today all that mother teresa uh no whatever she is she owes it to her formation to the formation at home all that heart that she went out to help us from her mother so home is where love begins home is where love begins she says mother teresa says it is very important that children learn from their fathers and mothers how to love one another and they're not going to learn it from the school they're not going to learn it from their teacher but from you but from you she says every father and mother should teach by word and by example how to love to their children how to show love care respect to others so children should learn from their parents children should learn language of love from parents and she also says always be the first to forgive with a smile be cheerful be happy 
Dear friends, all that I am trying to you know, explain here is this. Home is a place where love begins. Home is where, uh, where we learn to love each other. My dear friends, she says, this peace or love begins with a smile. Begins with a smile. Probably as a family, we must have laughed together. We must have had fun together. How many of you, after you return from the job, you look, look at each other and give a smile? You know, some have, the, I mean, our cheeks have become so hard, you have to, you know, you know stretch it. Yeah. When was the last time you looked at your father or your mother and gave a smile from a heart? Or when was the last time that you looked into your husband or wife's face and gave that beautiful smile? Today, that smile has disappeared in our families. There's so much of toxic within us. Those toxic do not help us to smile. There are so many hurt feelings in our hearts. We fail, we refuse to smile. We avoid people. So when we are trying to avoid eye contact, when we, are avoid, when we try to avoid looking into the face of the other, it means there's something in the heart which is no, uh, not allowing us to smile. That smile can express forgiveness. The smile can express love. That smile can express happiness, joy of living, seeing the other person. Dear friends, if your partner are be beside you, just look at each other and give a beautiful smile. Let's see. You don't have to feel shy. Or if you have a stranger around you, give a smile. That's okay. Yeah. Say hello. Yeah. We are forgetting to smile. We are forgetting to smile. And Mother Teresa, you know, she had wrinkles all over the face. Her face had, you know, uh, uh, her face was uh, shrinking, you know, uh, but still, uh, that smile was something which lit the smile in the face of the others. So often we forget. I think the first thing is, every morning when we get up, let's wish good morning with a smile. When you come back home, shake hands, greet each other with a smile. Let us never forget to smile. Probably we have a lot of things to debate. We have a lot of things to fight for. We have a lot of things to argue. Now given a chance, probably we'll hold collar and no stand in front of the other. But whatever it is, whatever it is, never, never forget to smile. Smile is something which can lit up the smile in the face of the other and can a peace relationship can begin. You know, that is what she says. Smile begins peace. Smile begins peace. Secondly, my dear friends, it is easy to love the people far away. It is not always easy to love those who are close to us. It is easy to love people who are far away, but it is very, very difficult to love people who are close to us. You know, we may turn to our husband and say, Good morning. I know when we look at hi, good morning, how are you? It's been long we have met each other. You know, we would be inquiring somebody else on message. How was your day today? You know, how was things with you? But we wouldn't ask a question to our own people. That's why Mother Teresa says, it is easy to love somebody. Ask you, examine yourself. You must have been very kind to people in the office. You must be very, very jovial. You will not be the person what you are at home. You will be a very different person when you come outside. But what happens to those people who are living with you? It is not at all easy to love those who are close to us. But bring love into your home. For where there is love, there is God. For where there is love, there is God. That's the second beautiful thing that we should learn from uh, Madam Teresa's quotes. We are called not to show just love you know, to others. I've heard there are, you know, in various parishes, there are members who will be very active, very, I mean, duty-born in the church. 
But when you go home, they don't do anything. So we have people of all this kind. So what's important, my dear friends? Probably these all little shaitans also. Okay, they will be running around doing all the help in the parish. When you ask them to go to a shop nearby, then they say, No, ma, I'm tired. My leg is paining. I have to study. You know, they give you a lot of excuse. I think all that Mother Teresa says is, she says, learn to love those who are living with you. Share love, share kindness, share forgiveness to those who are nearby. Don't just bother, I mean, worry about others and share kindness to others and neglect your own family, neglect your own children, neglect your own uh, people at home. Dear friends, so all that Mother Teresa, secondly, we are trying to say is show love to those people at home. Show love to your wife, show love to your children. Thirdly, my dear friends, uh, Mother Teresa speaks about prayer as the greatest strength for love. The family that prays together, here I go, the family that stays together, prays together, stays together. And if they stay together, they will love one another as God loved them. They would love one another as God loved them. So she is trying to emphasize on the role of prayer. On the role of prayer. In her timetable and in the timetable of sisters, she was very keen that sisters should spend an hour before the adoration Lord. They should spend an hour before the Eucharistic Lord, before they go out to do anything before they go out to do any service. So she is emphasizing the importance of prayer. Importance of prayer. Today we begin the month of rosary. Those days, we had this beautiful traditional practice. We would come every day to pray. You know, wherever we were, at 8.30 or 8 o'clock, we were all at home with our rosaries praying. All these traditional practices are disappearing today. A home deprived of prayer is deprived of love. A home deprived of prayer is deprived of forgiveness. Where do you think you will get strength to love? Where do you think you will get strength to sacrifice for the other? Where do you think you will get strength to forgive? It all happens. It all happens from the prayer. So Mother Teresa, for Mother Teresa, everything should spring from prayer. There were many moment, moments in the world, but many moments died down because their source of strength was not in their prayer. Similarly, if our family has to grow stronger in love, stronger in forgiveness, stronger in kindness, the third thing and the most important thing is prayer. Bring everything to God in prayer. That's what this beautiful song says. What a friend we have in Jesus. It says bring everything to God in prayer. Often when we are in trouble, we look for solutions outside. We go share to people outside. We, are, we want people to come and speak for us. We want to share and empty our burden. But bring first before you take it to anybody. Bring to God in prayer. Pray every day. Pray consistently. Bring your children together in family rosary. Make this as a norm. Make this as a rule. Make this as a rule. Let your family, let everybody begin to pray together. And probably after, a, after prayer, dine together. Spend quality time with each other. Spend quality time with each other. Dear friends, it all starts with prayer. Ask yourself, how often you all come together and pray? Do you go home on Sundays after the Holy Eucharist? Do you all pray together? Do you say a prayer together? Every day, either morning or evening, do you all come as a family? Thank God. Today, whatever we have is God's gift. Do you thank God? Do you ask forgiveness for your sins? Do you praise God for the blessings that you have received? Or you have kept God away? You have kept God away. Today, we are all busy. We are all busy with so many things. And as a result, we have kept prayer out of our lives. Let us ask us, let us once again come together in prayer. 
Many families today are disintegrating. You know, when they come for counseling, we realize there is a spiritual vacuum in these people. There is a spiritual vacuum, there is emptiness. God is far away from their lives. God is far away from their lives. In the teens who are committing suicide, prayer and God is far away from their lives. So bring prayer. I'll give you a very simple uh, you know, activity which you can do every day. You know, every day when you get up, I asked one of the couple who are married for 34 years, I asked them, what is the secret of your you know, life togetherness? You know what they said? Father, every morning we get up and bless each other. We bless each other, say a prayer for each other. We bless our children. So always say a prayer. You know, anger, bitterness, hardness, all these things comes down with prayer and blessing each other. So when you get up, just don't pray for yourself. Pray for your partner. Pray for your children. Say a prayer. That's a beautiful thing which you can reward or gift to your family members more than anything. And lastly, my dear friends, today, loneliness and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible poverty, says Mother Teresa. Loneliness and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible poverty. She's not talking about economic poverty. She's talking about uh, poverty of love. Poverty of love. She says in one place, we have orphans at home because many parents have gone on vacation. Many parents have gone on vacation. They have no time for their kids. They have no time to share their time of well-being with their kids. Many parents have gone on vacation. And Pope Benedict XVI also says, don't look for orphans only in the orphanages. Today we have also orphans living in our own homes. Living in our own homes. Think about your company. Your company rewards you. It gives you remuneration. It gives you promotion. And in 24 hours, you're ready to give 8, 10, 12 hours to the project, to the you know, work in the office. And how much of time do you think you give to your children, to your wife, to your husband at home. Tomorrow if your company removes you, your company will still flourish without you. Take it from me. But will your house survive? Will your house survive? Will your children have a beautiful future? Dear friends, the importance that we give to our profession we don't give that same importance to the family. Today, family has taken back seat. Today, family has taken back seat. In a families where du there are dually working couples, there is neglect, parental neglect in the formative aspect of your children. The first six, seven years are very, very important in the lives of children. That attachment is very, very important. There was a research which was done in Harvard University. They were trying to see who are the kids who become successful and what is there, no secret behind it. And all that they realized was loving family and healthy relationship. A loving family, healthy relationship. Now what is this healthy relationship? When we say healthy food, you know what is good for my body? And I say no to the other things, unhealthy things. So similarly, healthy relationship is what is good in a relationship between husband and wife, parents and children. That's healthy relationship. What promotes the good of the other. I'm sad to tell you, the number of suicide among teens are on rise. Number of suicide among teens are on rise. And there's a survey which came out very recently. It says, right from the age of 13, many children are exposed to pornography and many other things. The exposure is very high today. 
protecting children becomes our greater priority protecting our children becomes greater priority how many of you are aware what is happening in the lives of your children there is a a series on amazon prime family man series you know you this hero in this series he knows where the terrorists are hidden you know what is the next action of the terrorists but he has a daughter and a son he is clueless about what is happening in the life of his daughter and son similarly we have parents today who have no idea about what is happening in the lives of their children in the lives of the children but we are excellent in many other things except in our parenting today that is the greatest neglect and we are paying price for it right now today we are paying price for it our children are living in vacuums they are living in loneliness they are living in dep depression they are living in isolation they feel unwanted they feel unloved because people everywhere judge them according to their academics or according to their talents they don't see children as how they are what they are as a gift of god this is a biggest failure today my dear friends parental neglect parental neglect and mother teresa calls us to create this love family so that all these things would come down when there is a happy family the survey also says you are going to give identity promote self esteem and it prevents anti social behaviors they are not going to get into drugs they are not going to get into bad companies they are not going to become gundas or rafaids it prevents them from getting into anti social elements and there are low levels of depression when there is peace love and kindness in the family so that is the beautiful thing that you can give your children create an en environment of love peace and kindness one last thing to end with why did mother teresa go around serve everybody what did she see in the poor why did why has she to go and do things which others were refusing to do you know in one of the interviews the journalist says even if you give me a one crore i will not clean this man who is fallen in the gutter but you know what she says i see god in them i see god in them i see the image and likeness of god in them and she you no know, goes on to say they are like sacraments you know in every sacrament jesus is present similarly they are sacraments in whom jesus is present if you ask me they become the eighth sacrament so don't necessarily find jesus in the church don't necessarily find jesus in the bible try finding jesus outside the church they live in the poor and that is where our christian duty comes to completion our identity of christianity so share that love with the other families mother teresa narrates a incident she got to hear that one hindu family was uh, living in starvation so she packs all the ration goes and gives to this family with eight children and then the mother makes two packets she makes the whole collection into two packets and then she takes one a uh, packet of ration outside and then comes back without this packet mother teresa asks her where did you go what did you do with this ration she says there's a muslim family next to my house they were in need they also had no food for many days so she went to share service is nothing but sharing what we have sharing with the needy sharing with the needy dear friends don't be uh, let us not be you no know, locking ourselves in our own homes let us not become insensitive to the cries of people around let us also open our hearts to those people and like mother teresa let us also engage in the work of service sharing what we have you don't have to wait until you get a big fat salary all that this lady did was in her suffering she you no know, took care of the other neighbor who was in suffering 
let us learn to share as a family make some collections uh, probably during christmas or easter lent season we make we put together all the meat collection and other things then we take it and give it to others do that as a family charity that's a new concept that i want to give you don't do it alone teach your children also to save up to save up instead of having you no know, kfc or anything today okay let's sacrifice let us for this month's collection save something and give that to a poor family give that for the education of the poor of a child you have you have lot of people who may be in your own parish let the charity also begin in your own community so do begin a family charity dear friends let's close our eyes join our hands and thank god for all the blessings that we have received let us thank for the family that god has given we have not chosen god has given this family and god has called us to love one another let us surrender all bitterness anger and ask god to give you a heart to forgive each other let us greet people with smile every day a smile freed from bitterness and anger a smile filled with god's love let us pray let us pray for each other let us bless each other and let us think about family charity where as a family we share in the christian role of service lord hear our prayer we pray for our holy father pope francis for our archbishop and for all the bishops and priests that through their fraternal connection and guidance the christian faithful will may be strengthened in the life of virtue and learn to lead exemplary lives we pray to the lord for the leaders of our nation and the world that they may cultivate the habit of listening to the voice of the people so that they may correct what is wrong in our society and guide us on the way forward we pray to the lord we pray especially for parents grandparents godparents teachers and others who have a formative influence on the young we ask god to bless them with wisdom courage and right discernment so that they in turn may influence others to grow in a positive way we pray to the lord for all of us gathered here that the lord may bless us with the serenity to accept the things we cannot change the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference we pray to the lord
Stop. 